with Elia Je Lefferts from JoJo's Toys in Newington, Connecticut. His store is about to shut its doors. Welcome to the show. Tell me about your toy store. This must have been a dream for you and why you saw no choice but to shut your doors. Yes, well, thank you for having me. I appreciate being on the show. This was a dream, and honestly, we accomplished what we set out to do. We wanted to be filled with joy and bring love and warmth to the community, and I think we did it. But the problem is the supply chain, the price increase, I mean, three times over for our inventory, and of course, Amazon and online platforms, they're just undercutting the price so badly, and they wouldn't even let us list at a decent price. So it's, it's tough. It strong arms the small business, and this is the price we pay. I'm so sorry to hear about the, the loss of your business. So you're shutting tomorrow, right? What is it like to be? Tomorrow's the last day. What is it like to, to be experiencing your last day there? Um, it's bittersweet because it's been very stressful the past two months with such minimal sales. But, you know, you don't set out to open a business to just shut it down five months after that. So it's very bitter. It's a little sad when I look around and see the shelves beginning to empty. Um, but I think it'll hit me probably more next week. Today and tomorrow I'm going to be busy. And, and it is so tough to open a business and have it survive in the best of times. And you opened it in the middle of COVID. Why, why were you so optimistic about it? Yeah, you know, I appreciate that question. So when I first got laid off from my job prior to this, had about six months of sitting around and during that time, something shifted for me and it happened to a lot of my friends where we decided, why are we gonna keep working for everybody else? Let's do what we really wanted to do. And so my wife said, let's open a toy store and the idea made sense. So in September last year, we wrote a plan, we got it together, we were going to open in Los Angeles, but the um, occupancy was so low and I grew up in Connecticut. I said, let's go to Connecticut. There's families out there. It's a good environment, the communities, which is exactly what we have. This community in Newington is phenomenal. Wonderful people and loving people, but it just wasn't enough. So we thought we could bring that magical element of a toy store that you don't have at the big box stores where nobody's even in the same aisle to help you. Here we know everybody's name. I know all the people, their names are on the wall from painting their stuff on arts and crafts in the back wall. We made a loving place, but you know, the, the price increase was the nail in the coffin, honestly, and the supply chain delay. And toy stores are s such a magical, fun place to be. Um, I wanted to talk to you in terms of the perspective of the consumer, too, because we've been hearing about this holiday crunch, so we wanted to go straight to the source. What can families expect to be paying for toys? And will they be available this holiday season? Great question. Now, I certainly don't have a crystal ball, but from my experience, our cost increase went up three times, 300% increase. That being the case, I'd say prices are at least going to double, at least, because to stay in business, you have to do a markup, usually a, a full markup. So. If you can imagine our prices tripling in order to, you know, keep us sustained as a family and have the business pay for itself. So I could be wrong and listen, I hope I am, but prices are going to skyrocket, I believe. And I mean, what can we do? That's the nature of what's happening. So the, the oh, and as far as the delays, yeah, it's about 75 days on average to get product, and that's actually rising. Um, I have product we ordered in June. I received an email today. They're going to ship it on November 17th, and this is the email after the October shipment date email. September date, you see what I'm doing. So I don't think we'll ever see that product. We certainly won't be in business anymore, so too bad for them. So what is your plan now? Well, we look for work. Who would have thought? I told my wife, I guess I don't need my resume anymore, and all of a sudden I have to dust it off. But that's okay. You know, that's what we do. You know, we, we know where we stand. We know who's behind us. You know, no, no one else has to be when I say this. Please don't get me wrong, but we are people of faith. So we know God is in control, and we know he's going to keep us afloat through this. And we know we did what we needed to do. We're proud of it. It's a charming place, and I think it would have worked maybe in a year and a half or two years. We'll have a better sense of 
where we stand economically and kind of the new trend. That's just my belief. So maybe at that time, maybe you'll see JoJo's Toys and More again. Well, we hope to check back in with you and, and uh, tell a different story from here on out. We appreciate your time tonight, and I'm very sorry for the loss of your store. Aliyah Leffords, thank you so much for joining us tonight.